Well, my name is Mark Gunnison. I'm an application engineer with Bross Company. We're an industrial automation supplier here in the upper Midwest. And today I'd like to talk with you about micro PLCs and some of the motion capabilities that exist today. Many people aren't aware that uh, even on a 10, 14, or 20 point PLC you can do motion control. So on board we have four axes of pulse and direction or clockwise, counterclockwise uh, pulse control uh, that can be used uh, for stepper or servo motion. Uh, it's rated at 100 kilohertz and it's uh, very effective for, for motion applications. So in this video I will show you a little bit more about hardware. I'll also go into a very quick overview of uh, the product lineup from the brochure, show you where that, that product sits and some of those capabilities. We'll go into the programming tools, show you what a typical uh, wired or wiring interface looks like, and then uh, finish up with a product demonstration. Okay, so from the product standpoint, uh, looking at the lineup here in the lower right, you've got a CP1L, a CP1H, a CJ family known as a CJ1 or 2, and the large rack CS1 uh, platform. So we're focused in this discussion about the CP1L, although the CP1H will come into play. Okay, the motion capabilities are outlined in a number of places in the brochure. The lineup, though, on the hardware side is what I'd like to uh, review at this point. There's a 10 point, 14, 20, and then a 30, 40, and 60 point PLC. Additionally, if you need uh, greater capabilities, you can jump up to the next family, which is the CP1H. Uh, these offer up to a 1 megahertz pulse stream capability. There's units uh, with or without analog. As you would fly through the product line, uh, more detail will be presented in some of these motion capabilities. And here is illustrated an integration with the SmartStep 2 hardware that I'll be showing in a few minutes on the demo. Uh, there's also high-speed counter capability should you uh, need to close the loop or be doing some other form of positioning. Perhaps it's a Modbus integration out to inverters. There's a pseudo closed loop capability there as well. Okay, so for the programmer, uh, you know, a key point of interest is going to be with regard to the instruction set for manipulating motion. Uh, in the programming manual, section 5 is dedicated to this pulse output function, and these charts are pretty informative about uh, covering uh, the detail here. Uh, what I'd like to share with you just as a good quick review is, is that the instruction, the subset of the instructions, are about six or eight in total. You've got a, a speed command for doing velocity control. You can use that with an acceleration and get a ramp. Uh, you can uh, change speeds uh, discreetly on the fly and uh, do ramping and, uh, and curve control. Uh, the positioning commands are really done with a combination of um, some pulse commands and so forth. There's some more detail on how to stop uh, motion if it's running in, in uh, under a speed command uh, and or uh, doing that with a ramp down, um, scanning down. Uh, you'll see the pulse output for more doing positioning. Okay, and uh, you can use a, a pulse command uh, and or uh, a combination of a pulse command and an XL command to get ramping to do more of a trapezoidal move and complex trapezoidal moves can be done very nicely uh, with the pulse 2 command. This is the one I prefer actually all in one instruction you can create a, uh, um, a step frequency if you're trying to get through resonance on a stepper motor um, you can then in the next operand set your XL your overall or your speed, your overall distance at decel rate in that instruction does it all just in one PLC block. A very nice instruction to keep things simple and compact. Um, there are uh, a few other uh, explanations in here, changing speed and steps, uh, blending to change with an Excel, 
and things of this nature. So there's there's five or six pages in here that do a pretty good job of explaining this. This will be in the Ops Manual for the uh, CP1L. Another nice function with this micro PLC uh, family is, is, is that in the programming environment in the project tree under settings you can go in and manipulate how the uh, the homing functions work and really it's just a um, a simple selection of going through first from an operations manual and choosing um, the time chart that most uh, uh, accurately represents the homing routine that you'd like to do. So there's a couple pages in the ops manual that show you that. Some good detail here and really it's just a matter of going in then in your programming environment uh, choosing that setup um, structure and then very simply from the ladder code just uh, firing one um, instruction which is called the origin instruction. It can be used for for origin search to first establish a home or an origin return depending on the operands that you set in it. So an origin search would, would establish homing after a power up to get you uh, a known position. The origin return is just a different operand in that instruction that returns to home once you've been doing some positioning or, or other motion. Okay, in this next section we'll review the, uh, the wired interface to, uh, to accomplish this. Uh, one thing to be aware of is, is that the, uh, the I.O. layout changes depending on the model that you have. So in this illustration we're looking at a 10-point controller. Uh, you've got your, your pulse output capabilities uh, labeled here, the 14-point. Uh, you'll notice that, that it changes as you go. Uh, if I scroll down through uh, the locations here uh, with with regard to uh, to origin input uh, points and so forth do change. Uh, the table uh, below here will show uh, the uh, correct locations for for wiring um, your pulse interface depending on if you're doing pulse and direction versus clockwise counterclockwise. So some detail there that the the programmer or the uh, the project person will need to consider. Um, again, with the inputs, uh, your homing uh, inputs and locations of things here uh, do need to uh, be taken into consideration. Uh, so uh, the key point here is, is that uh, as you're buying the I.O. system, if you're buying a 20-point PLC and you're wanting to do two axes of motion control, you're probably going to, uh, to be using four points of output and probably two to six inputs depending on what kind of limits you might have on actuators. So uh, that will uh, take away from usable I.O. and uh, it's as you might expect but uh, just a good key point there nonetheless. Okay so as far as the product demonstration goes I've got one of our, our demo boards here. I'll just explain the hardware involved. Uh, here's the topic product, the, the PLC. I've got a 20 point PLC um, inputs wired in up here just to simulate clockwise limits, homes, and things of that nature. Power supply and a, a breaker for power to the board. I've got a, a serial com going out to an Omron HMI that I'll use for demonstration purposes. But as far as the motion goes, that's done here. So here's our Smart Step 2 servo pack. Uh, it's wired from its CN1 breakout to the output of the PLC. And the motors here, of course, so a servo pack wired through breakout to the PLC and HMI. So on this basic screen, just to start, I've got some, some jogging here. Uh, you can see my motor motion, uh, stop, clockwise, stop, counterclockwise, stop, change my, my input speed accordingly, and uh, you can see much slower speed. If I go to the next screen, We'll go back here just a second, stop motion. Uh, this is a relative move. I've got variables to push in Excel, D cell, target velocity, distance, and a start frequency. This is that pulse 2 instruction I mentioned. And uh, just a, a real uh, simple trapezoidal move here. If I go to the next screen, I've got a, um, an input uh, from the HMI to do four different positions. In a, in a basic demo form, I've got the Pulse 2 instruction running there. Uh, because it is doing absolute moves, I will do an origin search. You may have seen the servo motor move there. Um, and if I trigger this, then it will run through and show a bar graph performance. 
to achieve the four positions that we've got. Okay. And in the final section here, I will go in and show you a little bit about the ladder code and the programming environment, and that will conclude our session. Okay, in this last section, we'll do a very brief uh, review of, of some of the instructions that were used. We're looking at CX Programmer here. The project tree uh, consists of many of the typical things you would see in a PLC program, and my, my code sections are in through here. Uh, I'd like to go back just for a second though and talk about that uh, subject of, of homing that's uh, set up back here and under the PLC settings and uh, that can be found in under uh, the pulse output uh, control and here you see the various um, options that you have for, for setting the homing routine. This correlates back to the time chart patterns that we reviewed earlier on. So this is set up here and then it's really just fired from an origin instruction which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, for the basic speed control, here's an example of a speed control instruction. This is for jogging, this is for clockwise, counterclockwise. Uh, we, uh, we've got a port specifier for which axes of motion and output mode, pulse and direction versus clockwise, counterclockwise and a speed that comes in from the HMI. So clockwise, counterclockwise, jogging. The position control, here's the pulse 2 instruction. You just specify uh, which port, again, which axes, some control data, and then a block of uh, five or six registers that set up the whole trapezoidal move. The, uh, the sequence that I ran for you just a, a few minutes ago under uh, uh, the absolute move with four positions, I've got to establish an home, a home position first, and that's done with an origin command. There's an origin um, return, and here's an origin search. Okay, so you can just see that the control data is a little bit different. I've got some move data in here to set up uh, a beginning block for the move sequence, and then I've just got a pulse two instruction that takes in uh, different move values. So I've just got three or four uh, rungs of code that are required to move that, uh, that sequence of four moves. Uh, really very simple. Uh, down on the bottom here you'll see a, um, a grouping of, of items here that are related to uh, monitoring what's going on with the motion system and these are very helpful so as I would go and, and run motion you can see my present value uh, here, uh, contact here uh, or rather a bit for when my motion's in progress and some different things that way so a number of very uh, feature rich status bits back and uh, just a, a very nice, simple uh, way to approach uh, a motion application if it's uh, not too complex and needs to accompany a few I.O. This concludes my, uh, my video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and um, that's it. Thank you.